uh, I think that uh, Putin has come to the stage that he says that uh, the biggest mistake he has made before was to stop his war. So he will not stop uh, this war. I think that Putin has come to the stage of eternal war, uh, just like uh, Hitler. Or for that matter, uh, uh, Leo Trotsky had the idea of a permanent uh, revolution. So Putin will continue war until he's beaten. I want to start with a sort of broad question. To what extent do you feel like the West is letting down Ukraine at this point? I think the West really is letting uh, Ukraine down, not uh, delivering enough of uh, uh, arms and not uh, delivering the most relevant arms. And on top of that, uh, the US and Germany are put st putting strict conditions that Ukraine is not allowed to attack uh, uh, Russia with its arms. What could you say about what the, I suppose the motivation for that is? Why is there inaction? Why is there a, a letting down of Ukraine? Well, the White House has had this idea from the very beginning that we must not provoke Putin, we must not provoke a nuclear war, we must not provoke uh, uh, World War III. And therefore, Putin has managed uh, to scare the White House uh, so that it's been uh, utterly inadequate and all the time has uh, drip-fed Ukraine with less relevant arms, uh, and uh, all the time taking a, lo a lot of time. So in effect, uh, <clears throat> the White House has allowed far too many Ukrainians uh, to be killed and far too uh, much Russian damage to be done in, uh, in Ukraine. And Europe has been slow and Europe also does not have the relevant arms. And what all the countries are giving to Ukraine it's uh, their old arms, uh, usually 30 years old uh, or, or so, and then they're buying new arms uh, of the more modern types uh, for themselves. What is your analysis of the breadth of Putin's ambition here? Is it confined to Ukraine? He is often asked, and, or at least talks about uh, Europe. Is there any, should there be concern about a widening of this conflict? Indeed. Uh, I think that uh, Putin has come to the stage that he says that uh, the biggest mistake he has made before was to stop his war. So he will not stop uh, this war. I think that Putin has come to the stage of eternal war, uh, just like uh, Hitler, or for that matter, uh, uh, Leo Trotsky had the idea of a permanent uh, revolution. So Putin will continue war until he's beaten. What does defeat of Putin look like? What does beating him mean? Defeat would essentially be first that uh, Russia loses significantly Ukraine. I think uh, that the central issue is uh, Crimea. If Ukraine mm. takes or even uh, cuts off uh, Russian links to, to uh, Crimea, then I think that uh, Ukraine essentially uh, has won. And then I think that Putin would be ousted at home in one way or the other that we cannot uh, know much about. To what extent is Putin maintaining a grip on power and authority is perhaps a better word in Russia? Of course, there was an election there not long ago, uh, which was something of a foregone conclusion in the Russian context, uh, followed close quickly, actually, by the attack, the terrorist attack on the Crocus City Hall uh, concert venue. And I just wonder if that has weakened Putin in any way at all. Uh, I think so. But uh, what happened in the Crocus uh, City Hall, it was, uh, we may presume, that uh, this ISIS-K uh, uh, terrorist uh, had planned it and did it uh, themselves. But we could also see that uh, the Russian security did, uh, did not exist there. They did nothing. The security forces arrived one hour, hour afterwards. The terrorists were there for 18 minutes. There were no metal detectors on. There was no security uh, when people entered uh, this concert hall, in spite of Russia should have been on high alert for uh, a te a terrorist uh, attacks. So it looks as if uh, the Russian uh, uh, security service 
let the terrorists come in in order to create a big scare. Putin has done this repeatedly before in 99, when several houses were blown up and hundreds of people, the Russians killed, uh, in the Beslan school massacre, when more than 300 people were killed, mainly by the Russian attack. And in the Nordost uh, theater uh, event in uh, Moscow in 2002, when more than 100 people were killed, mainly by uh, Russian police gas. How notable is it that Moscow was targeted in the first place by these ISIS-K terrorists? What does what should we read into that, if anything? Well, uh, ISIS has uh, targeted Russia repeatedly before, and of course, Russia is uh, f fighting uh, against ISIS uh, in Syria, and uh, Russia is basically on the side of Taliban in Afghanistan, and ISIS is uh, uh, opposing them. And uh, it might also be how tactics are being uh, mistreated uh, for racist reasons uh, in Moscow itself. Mm. Perhaps I've I've skipped over something you said there, Anders, that, that the Russian security services, Putin, effectively let this terrorist attack happen. That is of huge significance for, for, a, for a leader to, to allow something like this. Can, can you help us understand why? Why would Putin allow this? Putin likes uh, big violent events because they uh, give him uh, uh, the, the advantage of gathering the Russians around him as a, a nationalist cause. And now he can say that we have to do something about these uh, uh, dirty immigrants from Central Asia. And the other is that it gives him uh, more of a mandate uh, to repress uh, uh, the people which uh, is what he wants. So you always have nationalism and repression. Uh, mm. This is what Putin wants. And uh, the more violent uh, events, the best of all wars, but terrorist attacks are also good for that uh, purpose, but better for Putin. Okay, so it adds to this overall picture and strategy. Is it a strategy? Is it as, is it as considered as so as to deserve being called a strategy of Putin? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Have you seen evidence of those things happening since the uh, terrorist attack on the on the concert venue in the last week? Has Putin's rhetoric changed? Have his actions spoken to those things you identify? Well, what has been striking is that uh, uh, Putin and uh, the Russian uh, propagandists have been trying to say that Ukraine was responsible mm -hmm. for this, uh, and also the UK and the, the US, uh, the, the normal uh, culprits in the, the Russian uh, uh, <clears throat> terminology. So th this is standard blaming Ukraine, the US and the, the UK and in general, uh, the, the West, and there's no basis for it whatsoever. Yeah. How would you describe, how would you sum up the West's approach then, given all we've talked about already, the West's approach to Putin? It, it seems almost cowardly, or is that too strong a word? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, it is this uh, idea, we have to keep talking to Russia. Yeah. Russia is important. So I would not say it cowardly, but it is the idea Russia is important. One must talk to Russia, and in particular, uh, the big countries, the US, France, and uh, Germany, less so Britain, that uh, think that uh, uh, Russia is important, we must continue talking, and uh, big powers have uh, special rights. So fortunately, Britain has much less of uh, this attitude uh, now, while Germany has far too uh, much of it. France is sort of getting out of it, and here in Washington, unfortunately, that's a very strong attitude. Mm. What would be your analysis, Anders, of what that could ultimately mean, if not defeat for Russia in Ukraine? And I hesitate to ask this question, but what should we fear? What are the limits on Putin, if any? Yeah, the, the, the important point we need to make is that uh, what is happening in Ukraine is not a stalemate. It is uh, either side is likely to push ahead sooner or later, if uh, one side has too little of arms or, or men. Right now, it's Russia that is pushing ahead. 
and uh, the U.S. Uh, Republicans, uh, who are to a considerable extent happy to support Putin because he's a good uh, dictator, they like dictators, unfortunately, in particular Donald Trump uh, himself, mm -hmm. and uh, that's one danger. And if Putin uh, actually manages to defeat Ukraine, he will continue. So th the next step, which particular uh, Polish uh, Prime Minister Donald Tusk uh, said the other day is that uh, if Russia takes over Ukraine, it will use the Ukrainian resources, military and men, and push ahead further to, to the West. Uh, think of it. Uh, uh, Ukraine has uh, probably 800,000 men under arms. Russia, uh, a bit more than a million. And how many does uh, Britain have? 80,000, France 100,000. So Western Europe doesn't have a manpower. If the Russians would push ahead uh, towards uh, the West, uh, the West has very little to put up against uh, Russia in the short term. And that's potentially World War Three. Yeah. We might already have seen the start of it in Ukraine. How quickly can the West turn this around? If they were to fully commit to defeating, backing Ukraine's defeat of Russia, how quickly could that happen? Well, you can say that uh, the West uh, needs rather little time mm. if it uses uh, what is in storage. So if you take for the US, I've seen the numbers, about half of US arms are actually in storage. The US could legally just give this to Ukraine, and this would be an enormous strength. So, uh, And similar with uh, many other countries, they have a lot uh, in storage which is not uh, being used. Some of it needs to be uh, touched up for a few months, but it can, it can uh, uh, be done. So the, question, uh, the point is rather the West needs to uh, start taking this war seriously. It's not only about Ukraine, but it is about the West itself.